Hello, my name is Elijah Noisen, and I'm a graduating psychology major here at Georgia Gwinnett College. Today I will be presenting my research, which explains the neurological phenomenon that happens in the Drosophila, also known as the fruit fly motor neuron. All the data that I collected to explain this phenomenon comes from a biologically and biophysically accurate computer simulation of a Drosophila motor neuron, which was designed by my supervisor and professor, Dr. Chinges Ganai. So what you see here is just one graph from Dr. Baines and Dr. Langrass's research, which we use to model our experiments after. In part A, the diagram shows pycrotoxin, which is a neurotoxin, which is fed to the pregnant drosophila. This causes their offspring to be affected permanently by this pycrotoxin. Now, pycrotoxin inhibits GABA, which is an inhibitory neurotransmitter. This causes the motor neuron to become overly excited, which causes the seizures inside of the larvae. In part B of this graph, you see that there are recordings of spontaneous rhythmic currents, also known as SRCs, which are measured in picoamps. The recordings of the SRCs are coming from the anterior corner cell, also known as the ACC motor neuron from the Drosophila larvae. So the graph on the left is the control and the graph on the right is of four independent experiments that actually showed the same results. As mentioned before, the PTX there is for the pycotoxin experiment. And then the next experiment there says para-BSS. And the para-BSS experiments were conducted with the use of genetically mutated drosophila. The mutations cause voltage-gated sodium channels to become more sensitive. Uh, and lastly, the two last experiments there were in use of channel rhodopsin and holorhodopsin, which are light-sensitive photoreceptors, which are placed into the drosophila larvae. Each experiment produced the same result, wherein the duration of the SRC increased, but in none of the cases did the amplitude of the SRC increase. It is unknown to the researchers why the amplitude would not increase. My research, however, will try to shed some light on why the phenomenon takes place in the ACC motor neuron. And the graph, the bar graphs, also show that both recovery time of the larvae and the SRC durations are increased over 200% when compared to the control across all experiments. We believe that the phenomenon occurs due to the biophysics of the neuron membrane. Now on to our methods. The image that you see on the right is of the topology of the computer simulated ACC motor neuron. The numbers on the model represent where we were simulating SRCs using a train of spikes. Um, a fixed number of 15 spikes are sent to each of the 10 synaptic locations. Each synaptic location will receive the spike at a different starting time and also at random. But the same start times were maintained across all experiments. To mirror the results of Dr. Baines, we manipulated the weight parameter. The weight parameter is the combination of both the amount of vesicles released into the synaptic cleft as well as how responsive the synapse is to the neurotransmitter. The graphs that you see above are of previous simulations that I ran this semester in which I changed the weight parameter. And you can see those values on the x-axis. And I recorded the magnitude and duration of each RAN simulation. And as you can see, the SRC durations increase indefinitely while the SRT, SRC magnitudes begin to saturate as the weight multiplier is increased. This is the same exact neurological phenomenon that was happening in Dr. Baines and Dr. Langrass's research. And below you can see a chart of the SRC data itself with a voltage clamp being applied here. Um, each stage here, the black being the control and the red being the greatest increase in the weight, that the duration is definitely increasing while um, when compared with the pink and the red lines there, you can see that there is a truncation or a saturation happening at zero millivolts there. Lucky for us, the computer model allows us to further analyze what is happening in the neuron, which is not easily completed when you're studying a live neuron. And this is why we're able to answer the questions for Dr. Baines and Dr. Langrass's research. Here is a graph of the voltage at the synapse. In which case here, the weight is 0 0.0018. This is the control. This is just the default that is set. Um, the blue line represents the location number one 
of the neuron. The red line represents number five location of the neuron. So this gives you both a reading of the upper and lower dendrite. The green line represents the number of action potentials that happen in the neuron. And in this case, it would be 10. So I've decreased the weight times eight here, which is giving me a nice low reading in which you can see there are no action potentials happening. This here is the image of when we began to see voltage saturation. Um, as you can see, the weight is 0 0.00576. You'll no also notice that the duration is also increased. This is another graph just showing the truncation after the weight has been increased even further, at which point you can see that the voltage does not increase, but the duration has just a little here. And lastly, we're seeing the phenomenon that was experienced in Dr. Baines and Dr. Langrass's research in which the voltage of both dendrite locations is unable to go past zero millivolts, causing there to just be a straight line. You'll also notice that the duration is now surpassing that of 600 milliseconds. Here is a graph of all recorded simulations that were ran, and you can see that the voltage here begins to saturate by the fourth experiment and truncates by the seventh. It was also noticed that the action potentials of each simulation began to saturate as well when the weight was increased. So why does this happen? We believe that this is because the driving force of the synapse begins to reduce as the cell membrane becomes more depolarized. As the synapse's driving force continues to decrease, the resulting current then decreases as well, which causes the cell membrane to never exceed zero millivolts. In the future, we would like to test to see if there are any other explanations for this neurological phenomenon and also if are there other synaptic placements that avoid the outcome in the model. Thank you for watching um, and I would like to also acknowledge Dr. Richard Baines and Dr. Matthias Landgraf and also Don Charles Sukuptapali and Boima Rubin Masakoy um, for helping me work on this project. Thank you. Have a nice day.